Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to explain what a leverage buyout is. First, I'm going to give an overview of what a leverage buyout is. Then I'm going to talk through the math behind an example leverage buyout. And finally, I'm going to talk through a few ways in which we can increase returns from a leverage buyout. All right, let's jump into it. So what is a leverage buyout? A leverage buyout occurs when a financial institution, usually a private equity firm, buys a company using a large amount of corporate debt in addition to equity. So what is the goal of a leverage buyout? Well, the private equity firm wants to use the cash generated from the acquired company to pay down the corporate debt over the hold period, which in return will increase the amount of equity return to the private equity firm when the company is sold. Now I know that was a lot of information to take in, so let's take a step back. What helped me better understand what a leverage buyout is, was comparing it to buying a home. When you buy a home, you don't pay for the full amount out of your pocket. Usually you will take a loan or some sort of debt, such as a mortgage, from a bank to pay for a portion of it. The same concept applies to a leverage buyout. The private equity firm will raise corporate debt to pay for a portion of the total purchase price. Now for the equity at close, when buying a home, you usually have some required cash down payment, anywhere from 20 to 40%. And for a leverage buyout, the private equity firm will put in its own cash anywhere from 40 to 60% of the total purchase price. For payments, when buying a home, you usually anticipate to pay down your mortgage using your personal income. And for a leverage buyout, the private equity firm plans to pay down the corporate debt using the company's cash flow. For the equity at sale, when buying a home, the goal is to have a majority of the mortgage paid off so that you can receive a majority of the cash when your home is sold. And the same concept applies for a leverage buyout. The goal is to have a majority of the corporate debt paid off so that when you sell the company, the private equity firm can receive a majority of the cash at close. All right, now that we know what a leverage buyout is, let's take a look at the math behind a sample transaction. For our scenario, let's assume a private equity firm buys a company for $400, which assumes an eight times valuation multiple on the company's $50 in EBITDA. Let's also assume that the private equity firm will use $200 of corporate debt and $200 of equity to fund the transaction. So as I said before, the goal of a leverage buyout is to use the cash produced by a company to pay down the corporate debt over the hold period. So first, we have to project out the free cash flow for the company. To do this, we'll start off by projecting EBITDA, and then we'll project out a few cash expenses and charges that the company anticipates to pay. These typically include interest expense, taxes, changes in networking capital, and capex. So for our example scenario, we are assuming that the company will generate $35 in free cash flow each year for the five year hold period. Now, as I said before, we are assuming that the private equity firm raises $200 of corporate debt. So if we assume that the company can use all of its free cash flow, so $35 a year to pay down corporate debt. At the end of the five year hold period, we will only have $25 of debt left over. Now to get an idea of how much the private equity firm will take home in cash at the end of the sale, let's first get an idea of valuation that the private equity firm could sell the company at the end of the five-year hold period. So in our approach, 
we're going to be conservative and assume that EBITDA does not grow and also that we can sell for the same valuation multiple that we entered at. So we will be selling for the same $400 that we bought. But where it becomes advantageous for the private equity firm is where we had to only put $200 in equity at the start. We will be taking home $375 in equity because we paid down debt during that hold period. Now let's take a look at a couple metrics that private equity firms typically use to analyze transactions. First is internal rate of return, also known as IRR. And this shows how much return per year a transaction can generate. And then also there's multiple uninvested capital known as MOIC, which is calculated by the equity taken home by the private equity firm at sale divided by the equity that the private equity firm had to put in at the start. So once again, the leverage buyout becomes very attractive for a private equity firm because the company is able to pay down corporate debt using the cash flow, which will increase the amount of equity that the private equity firm can take home at close. All right. Now let's walk through a few ways in which a private equity firm can increase the return realized on a leveraged buyout. First, the company can grow EBITDA. The company can do this through a combination of growing revenue and reducing expenses. The impact that this has on returns is that as EBITDA increases, cash flow will also increase and that additional cash flow can be used to pay down debt. And also, as EBITDA increases, the company's valuation will increase at the time of sale. Second, the company can decrease CapEx and changes in networking capital. The company can decrease CapEx by spending less on or delaying capital projects and can lower the change in networking capital by negotiating more favorable terms with customers and suppliers. And as these two categories decrease, this will increase the cash flow. And once again, that additional cash flow can be used to pay down debt. Third is that the private equity firm can try and lower the equity purchase price at close. The private equity firm can do this by trying to negotiate more favorable terms for example, the private equity firm can offer the owner a chance to co-invest alongside the private equity firm or can offer them a seller note in hopes that the owner will lower the equity purchase price. And as you can guess, a lower investment upfront will increase returns at the time of sale. Finally, the private equity firm can try to increase the sale price at the end of their holding period. A company's valuation can be increased through going EBITDA over the hold period, as we talked about before, but can also increase by shifting the company's revenue mix towards either more favorable end markets, such as healthcare or technology, or making it more recurring in nature, giving the cash flows more stability and predictability. And of course, a higher sales price will increase returns. So to sum that all up, a private equity firm can increase the return realized on a leveraged buyout by growing EBITDA, decreasing CapEx and changes in networking capital, lowering the equity purchase price at the time of close and increasing the sales price at the end of the company's holding period. All right, hopefully after watching this video, you now have a better understanding of what a leverage buyout is. And if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe below. Look forward to talking to you guys again soon.